Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone, I'm Jim Dempsey. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Jim and Java. It's always a pleasure to be here to address your questions, to answer any of your concerns that you have, and to help you face the challenges that you have in the area of development and fundraising. This is something that I have just enjoyed. It hasn't always been easy to face the challenges that we face in providing the funding for our organization, but it, it is one of those challenges that I have just enjoyed. And to a large degree, I felt like I was created and wired specifically for this. And I hope that you can find that same feeling that fundraising and development is not a necessary evil, something that you have to do, but something that you'll grow to love and enjoy. I love the relationships that we have with our partners, just to hear people's passion, hear their heart, hear their desire to make a difference in the world and to uh, in some cases, make a difference in eternity. And I just uh, enjoy being a part of helping those individuals fulfill their passion, their desire, their mission. And as their mission and their desire intersects with our mission, that's when things really get exciting. So I'm glad to be able to be here. I hope that you are a subscriber to this community and if you're not already please subscribe to this channel and join our ever-growing community of individuals who are striving to increase income and become fully funded let's dive right into our first question today our first question today is from brian in athens ohio and brian asks are small fundraising events worth it now brian first of all i want to go on record as saying i really believe it's important to have a diversified portfolio. That means I don't believe that fundraising or development should only be one strategy or one effort. It Yes, I have definitely fallen into the trap over the years uh, as, as being a do-it-yourself or a home repair person and relying on that big hammer to solve all my problems. But honestly, I like it when I've got the right tool that is going to solve the problem that I have uh, regarding anything in repairs that I might have. I like it when I have the right tool and the exact same thing applies to development. When I've got the right strategy, I've got the right tool, it makes a big difference in growing our relationships with people and getting them involved. Not every strategy is going to be for every person. Not everyone in your organization wants to participate in a golf-a-thon. Not everyone wants to participate in a walk-a-thon. Not everyone wants to participate in your annual dinner. And certainly not everyone qualifies to go face to face with you and hear about your funding strategy. I believe it's so important that you look for the strategy that works best for individuals. Now, if you've got a large mailing list and you have a lot of people who you need to reach, find those things and those strategies that will reach the most uh, amount of people with the least amount of effort. Now, that comes to your question about fundraising events and fundraising activities. I have found over the years that too many organizations have really gotten into the business, so to speak, of fundraising and forgotten the importance of friend raising. They've got about the business of selling cookies, selling candy, having car washes, and efforts that do bring in money so don't get me wrong, there's organizations, and I've mentioned it before, the Girl Scouts is an example, who they rely a lot on their income on cookie sales. But that, to me, those kinds of efforts of, of fundraising bring in dollars, but they don't, in most cases, raise friends. They're not building long-term relationships. And that's really the important thing. Yes, is it good to pay your bills this month? Absolutely. No one wants to be a leader and wants to have to worry about 
when is the next paycheck coming in or how am I going to keep the lights on? No one wants to worry about those kinds of things. But you really should be playing the long game. You really should be seeing your development efforts as a marathon and not a sprint. And what that means is you want to look for those efforts that might not necessarily bring in the immediate dollars now, but they will bring in consistent immediate dollars over the years and that is very important now I've seen too many organizations spend countless hours and burn out volunteers doing events that will bring in some money but won't produce long-term benefits and when you end up losing your people in a sense you using the the old analogy of killing the goose rather than enjoying the golden eggs that they have that's when you really run into problems and so it's important that you don't spend a lot of time and effort and money on something that's not going to produce that much as an example you could spend an entire day uh, really even weeks leading up to this but spend an entire day in front of a gas station washing cars and net a hundred dollars you could have one lunch with a person in their office and get a gift of $5,000. Which one would be the best use of your time? I'm not knocking those efforts that people have, whether it be flower sales, gift sales, something that does develop some momentum and some positive PR and positive goodwill for your organization. I am one of the biggest advocates of doing a development dinner an development event I believe those kinds of things work well but if there were some things that you could do that might produce more money with less efforts I think you need to look at that but even on that hand I am always a big advocate of diversification in that can I also meet with people face to face on one hand but also have an event for the masses not every major donor is going to want to go to your dinner those appointments may be face to face I've also got a lot of people that I can't meet face to face a dinner is a great way to do that and then I've got individuals I've got donors that love activities like golf or bowling or walking or jogging I'll have those kinds of events and allow them to run those events and use the proceeds for our organization so there's a lot of activities that can be done that will meet all of your needs and not necessarily um, have you make a choice between that you can do both but honestly you really need to look and see is it worth my time to spend an, an entire day in the hot sun washing cars for a hundred dollars so I think you need to look at that yes a dinner might take you 14 16 weeks to prepare you've got printing costs you've got food costs but you could net 50 or a hundred thousand dollars from that event and that also would develop long-term relationships with people so all those things need to be considered as you're planning your strategy so Brian I hope that answered your question uh, I would really ask if any of you have questions please reach out to me at on Twitter at DevFStrats, use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can always reach out to me on my email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. In Instagram, take advantage of being a part of our Instagram community at Dev Effectiveness Strategies and follow our Monday tips, our Thursday fun segment of fundraising in film and of course my shorter segments my tips uh, on with Jim Dempsey on Thursday morning so take advantage of those and also join our Facebook community development effectiveness strategies uh, in the Facebook community uh, in the group area and I am here always to help you grow and become the organization you want to be and we are here to strive to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded thanks a lot see you next week and see you in the next video